What's up, divas and divas? It's your girl. You already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So let's get into this, y'all. First of all, I want to say happy hump day. You know what I'm saying? Happy hump day. I hope you guys are enjoying your morning, afternoon, evening. Whenever you watch this video, I hope you guys are having a great day. As for me, you know, it's really actually Tuesday, but you know, I will say this every week. I do this on Tuesday. Sometimes I get lucky and do it on a Monday, but you know, normally it's done on a Tuesday. And I do like to plan ahead, like meaning I like to be ahead, but it is done on a Tuesday and it's pretty damn late. It's six in the evening here, which means on the East Coast, it's nine in the evening. So anyway, we about to get into this really quick. Um, I do, I normally do these early in the morning, but let me tell y'all today, I actually had to go to the dentist. Okay. Again, now you guys know from like a couple of weeks ago, I did explain to you guys that I was at the dentist, my office that I was supposed to go to. They moved to a new office. It didn't open up yet. And that Gaylene said she would call me and let me know when it was time and I'd be the first patient up in there in a couple of weeks. Well, needless to say that um, Thursday passed and Thursday was more than a couple of weeks. Like I, I'm not impatient, but I am impatient, especially if I give you my money. You know what I'm saying? Like my husband always said, once you pay somebody in full, they act like they don't want to do shit. Okay. They will. If you don't pay them, they will work for their money. But if you pay them before they work for their money, they don't act like they want to do shit. So anyway, today I had to go to the Happy Valley office because the office that I go to was still not open. But mind you, on Thursday, I did um, text Gaylene a message basically saying that I was unhappy with the services. Um, I have not heard from you as of yet regarding when the office was going to open. You said you was going to email. I mean, you was going to call me. I haven't yet to receive a phone call from you. I'd like to know what's going on because I'm tired of sitting around here for my teeth and my teeth are hurting. I've already paid in full. You know, I was this short of not being really nasty, but I wasn't nasty. I was stern and to the point because I need you to understand where the fuck I'm coming from. Because sometimes when you are too stern, or not even too stern, but when you are rude and nasty to people, they don't want to do shit. They don't want to acknowledge you. So I did handle, handle, handle this in a more professional way, but a very stern way, more or less like, listen, we're not about to go here. You're going to handle this, take care of me and, or else I'm going to sue you and get my money back. So she texted me right back and she was like, I actually was in meetings all day yesterday, which I don't even believe talking about, um, we will be opening the office up April 2nd. You will be the first patient. Tell me what time you want to come in. Okay. So I told her you know, 9 a.m. because I'm going to be the first motherfucking patient. So cool. Anyway, set up my appointment. Today I had to go to Happy Valley because I had to get my crown put on my back molar tooth. Now, Dr. Cooperman was there and unfortunately he, he says to me, April, I know you're going to be mad with me, but I don't really like the way this crown is fitting you. Like I can push it down and it could wiggle, but if it, I, I just don't like the way it's fitting properly and it, it'll get air in it and it'll get food in it and it'll decay. And I don't like this. He said, so I know you're going to be mad, but I'm going to t have the lab remake another one because I want this to be properly fit. I want this to be done right. So I, I respect that. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you know what I'm saying? He did put a temporary, a temporary one back in my mouth, which was, you know, fine. So as I was leaving, you know, he said, well, I, I was, before I was even leaving, I informed him about, you know, April 2nd, how he was going to be at the other office. He didn't have no idea about what the fuck I was talking about. Um, and what Gaylene was talking about. And Dr. Joe, who is also at the Happy Valley office, who also goes to the new office, he, and he's the office manager. He was like, Dr. Cooperman is actually not going to be able to make it there that day. And I'm really trying to just transition him to be here. I'm trying to find another dentist to be over there. So I already informed Gaylene prior to this that I'm not going to be seen by nobody but Dr. Cooperman. So you know what I did to make matters even easier for myself? I said, you know what, though? I don't want to go anywhere where Dr. Cooperman ain't. So I'll come here on. He said, well, I'm going to bring you here on a second. He asked me what I had to get done over there. I said, I don't know. This is the text message. Let him read the text message. Point blank period. So now I have to drive um, 
20 miles versus probably like five miles um only because i'd rather be where my dentist is at okay because he's come he makes me feel comfortable and he does a really good job and he cares okay versus going to the office where gaylene is at because if i go over there i might just manhandle her in the wrong type of way which she really don't like and i might get beat the fuck up okay because that's a big bitch okay she's hawaiian for one so she might be into that sumo wrestling shit i'm not really sure but she bigger than me and and all she need to do is sit on my fucking ass and I'm done for, okay? Sit on my little chest and I'm done for. So I really don't want to go over there and start picking a fight that I may not be able to win. I mean, I might could get some wins in because, you know, we from two different types of hood that I know of. But then again, you know, I don't really even want to go over there and I don't really want to even go to jail. And on top of that, I'm just not even going to be bothered because Dr. Cooperman is not going to be there. So why should I fucking be there? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I ended up having to take care of today. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that we got this squared away. So, yes, and that. And then on top of that, um, nothing really much. My my morning has... You ever have one of those days, like, I really feel like my day is not really going that great? Like, okay. It started off with me trying to just do the little bit of makeup that I was trying to do this morning before I went to the dentist because I really do get tired of leaving the house with my head wrap on. I mean, it looks really cute, but no makeup on. And, I mean, I look decent, too, but... You know, if my appointment is super early, I don't really care how I look. I just want to get there and get out. But I did try and my like my eyes weren't working for me. And it's like, okay, you know, I got hooded eyes and it seems like they're getting more hooded as the, as the time goes by. So that's why I was telling you guys prior that I wanted to get my eyes done. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because they're like super hooded. And on top of that, if I don't wear my lashes, you know, I feel like I look worse than Kermit the Frog because you can really see my hooded eyelids and it just makes me feel so ugly. So I just kind of like had a breakdown this morning, like a serious breakdown. I was just crying over the phone to my husband because I get stressed out and I get like, I'm, I'm like, it's not that I'm overwhelmed, but I am overwhelmed and I'm like really stressed out. I feel like, you know, I do a lot and I, it doesn't pay off. Um, and it just was a lot of things that just in my household and just in my life in general. So I really didn't have a good morning. And this is when I came home from the dentist, my eyelashes that I had just did probably like a few days ago, they weren't acting right. So I just got so upset. I just ripped them off and sat there and just cried and cried and cried and I just thought about my life in general, like, you know, it seems like sometimes it's just, I, I don't know, like I said to you guys last week, I feel like I have this invisible sign on me that just screams unlucky or it's just something negative in general. And I just couldn't take it anymore today. Like, I really, really couldn't. And then sometimes it's like my, 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 my two eldest kids that really get to me. It's just like a lot of things. And like, I just couldn't take anymore. And then with my teeth and it just be a lot of things. And then I thought about my edges and stuff. And it just was like, I couldn't take it anymore. I just couldn't take it anymore. And I just, or, you know, when you look at yourself, it's like, okay, well, I lost a lot of weight. I'm at 189 pounds now. But then when I look at myself without like, like the makeup on, I just feel really ugly. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I look old because my face has gotten really thin. Um, since I've lost weight. And so sometimes, and you may not be able to tell because I have makeup on and you know what I'm saying, but without the makeup, my face looks very thin. Um, and I just feel like, I don't know. I, I just really don't feel like myself. And then when I look at myself and I don't have on a wig and I look at my edges, I just really feel ugly. And it's just really, really starting to bother me. So I just really had a tough morning and I had to get myself together. And then also like, even with the YouTube thing, I really didn't want to do this real talk video today. I didn't, I didn't even upload a video for Tuesday, even though I had some, because I just really, I don't know. It feels like the part of me is like, it's not that I'm not into it, but it feels like, you know what? I work so hard to do these videos and it's like, I just feel like, why doesn't anybody notice me? So I have all these subscribers and barely anybody that watches. So that like really bothers me. And, um, I just feel like, you know, I'm just doing this for nothing. And I, and I don't, I barely get any sleep. You know, I go to bed like two in the morning and then I have to wake up at like six 30. I wake up at six 30. So it's like, I get four hours of sleep every night, four and a half, maybe sometimes five. And on the weekends, you know, it's like the same. I'll get like five hours of sleep and then I'm back to work again. So it's like, why am I just like digging myself in this hole? And it's like, am I, Am I doing this? What What is this about anymore for me? It's like, I don't know. Maybe I need a break. 
And I, I already told my daughter, Nay, when I leave to go to New York on the 10th of April, that I'm not even going to worry about um, uploading videos or anything like that. That's what I said to her last night. And I don't know if I'm going to feel that way come April 10th. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would hope not to feel that way. But, you know, I, I just feel like this, like, you know. Sometimes you just get worn out and everything isn't for everybody anymore. And I'm starting to feel like like that about myself. Like maybe this isn't for me anymore. And it's not that I don't want to do it because I enjoy doing YouTube. But it just feels like, you know what, April, you're making videos and nobody's even watching you. So you're just doing this for nothing now. And it's just like, what is the sense? So I just, I've just been going through a lot of things and, you know what I'm saying? And I just... I just had a very bad morning today, like self-evaluation. And I'm glad that, you know, I have like my husband to talk to me and I really wish that he was here with me. And I can't wait to see him on the 10th of April, but I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it gets really, really, you know, hectic and shit. And I just feel really depressed, not even depressed, but stressed out, you know? And then with the lack of sleep that I've been getting, I've noticed like when I don't have any makeup on, like I have like this bag under my eye. I don't even know if you guys can see it because it, 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 here it goes. Like, you know, it's like, okay, I got a bag under my eye because I'm not getting any sleep, probably because I'm not getting any sleep. But then it's, I think it's because I've lost weight that my face and my skin is just not as tight as it used to be. And it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I just have like the worst luck ever and I don't even know what to do. So my morning was really, really shitty and um, I'm still trying to get it together. Like seriously. So I'm glad that, you know, I have him, my husband, because he does cheer me up and he makes me feel better. But I really just wish that he was here with me. But, you know, soon he will be. But it's just hard sometimes. Just really, really hard. <laughs> But other than that, you know, I pulled together. I just, I wasn't even going to put on a wig. I was just going to wear my scarf. And I really didn't put it on. Look, I sat that shit right here on the top of my head. Like, I didn't pull out any hairs or anything like that. I just freaking blended it as best as I could and um, used this freaking um, colored edge tamer. So let me tell y'all a story about this real quick because I don't think I shared this with you guys last week. Did I? No, because I didn't have this shit for a week. So anyway, so I was watching YouTube, right? And um, basically, y'all know I use the topic and, you know, it's like those little hair filler fibers. So it hasn't been like, it, it's it's cool to use that, but I get tired of using that sometimes because you have to constantly spray it like every day. And sometimes if I'm getting too hot or I'm brushing away or whatever, or I'm putting gel or hairspray, I have to redo it again. So it starts to start pissing me off. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like it's not working for me like that, like it used to. And I could be wrong. Maybe it's just the anxiety that I'm having. So I'm on there and I'm looking up something for the edges. And so, you know, that black hair gel comes up just to make your edges look thicker. I think it's called OK. So then I see like some other ones, you know, pop up like by um, Eben New York. OK, so Eben New York has an edge tamer. And if you guys have never heard of them, they're just they're really popular. It's a good edge tamer. It's not like Gorilla Snot or like got to be. It's a little softer. It's a little bit more greasier, but it does hold your edges down because that's what I use. Or I'll use something very similar to it, especially if you don't got no edges. You don't want none of that hard stuff breaking your edges up. So what I, and it has like stuff like Moroccan oil in it or um, olive oil in it to make your edges like, you know, so I'll use stuff like that. But I did not know that they had a color edge tamer to make you look like you got some motherfucking edges. So I looked on um, I am Amazon and they wanted like $11 and $12 and $15. I was like oh, 26 I was like, not today, not from April, not from Pamela Posey's daughter. You're not about to get that from me. So I looked on eBay. You mind you, I don't even be on eBay like that anymore. So I found, I, I said, oh, okay, you can get a bottle. You can get a jar for like all together after shipping. It was like two dollars for shipping, so it's like in in the product. So I pay, I paid eight dollars for this, ten cents short of eight dollars. I was like, all right, I couldn't wait for it to get in. Blah blah blah. I was all excited, like what? Whoop de whoop! It's coming in. So I get, I get, I get the package in the mail. Okay, and this and it's like this, you know, those little white plastic envelopes, right? And I was like, oh, what is this? Somebody must have sent me some makeup. <laughs> Could you tell me why this is it? Okay, listen. 
This is the size of it. This. Y'all see how small this shit is in my hand? When I seen the lady on YouTube using it, she must have got like the full size jar because she had four of them. And I think even New York sent them to her, okay? And the way she was slapping that shit down on her motherfucking head would make it seem like she had the big ass jars. A matter of fact, she did actually. So I thought that this, you know, pictures are real motherfucking deceiving on the internet. Like you see something, you, why? I wouldn't have even thought that somebody was going to send me a gel like this small any fucking way. Cause like, what is you supposed to do with this? So I was so pissed off with this. I was like, did I just really spend this like some shit that you would buy at the beauty supply store? Like, you know how, when you checking out and they got like little things like eyeliner, razor for your eyebrows, shit like that, little tongue rings or whatever, sitting on the counter for like a dollar, dollar 99, you know what I'm saying? That's what this shit belongs right up there with that shit. Cause this gotta be like at least a dollar 99. So, because if you paid $6 for this, why would you send me this for $6? You ain't making no market. No, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, this is some bullshit. This is, I can't slap this on my motherfucking head like this bitch did, but either way I wouldn't even want First of all, she did it all wrong because I figured out the trick to this. So first of all, it's super thick, okay? It's massively thick. So if you think you're about to slap this shit up on your head like that, then you're not. There is a trick to doing this shit, okay? And I'm going to show y'all real motherfucking quick, all right? So if you don't got no edges, if none of y'all bitches, some of y'all bitches don't got no edges, this is how you do this shit real quick, okay? So you take your finger. This is how I do it, okay? You see it on my finger? This, Because I don't want it slapped on like that. You see where my little edges is at? I just take it and dab, dab, dab. Now, mind you, first of all, let me just tell y'all this. Don't think that you're going to... This is what I do. I would not suggest... I would not suggest using this gel to make your baby hairs or whatever, your style. Don't do that because that's what the lady did. And it just looked to me, I just think it didn't look too good. So I use like like the even New, even New York regular gel or whatever kind of gel you're using. Whatever it is, make sure it's not flaky white gel. You know what I mean? Like got to be because if you put that got to be, you know, that shit flakes up and turns white on you. And then you put this colored shit on top of it, it's no bueno. Um, so this is what I do. I just take it and go lightly. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Because it's very, very thick. This lady was, she was going ham on this motherfucking pomade. Or I, I called it pomade. Because that's what the fuck it looks like. Anastasia Beverly Hills pomade size. You know what I mean? Some short shit like that. She was, but she was slicking that shit down like it was like, like, um, a nice texture, a nice consistency. This shit is thick as a motherfucker. You cannot fucking wait. No wonder why her shit look jacked the fuck up. Now, first of all, this is how I did it, okay? And you don't want too much because it started looking fake. And that's what it started looking like to me. Like, So then once I get it like this, you know what I'm saying? I just let it dry. But I also take like the toothbrush. And I kind of like brush some of it away because, you know... I don't want it just like looking like it's just sitting there and shit on my head. So that's how I do it. Now, once it dries, it'll be, you know, it'll be a little darker, but it'll also look a little bit more blended in. So I just tap it in um, and shit like in, in little areas, because if you glop this shit the fuck on, it's going to look a hot ass mess for real. But the main thing to this was I was so disappointed, like. Did y'all really just send me this little ass shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all got to be kidding me with this little ass jar. But you know what? For the amount that you need or may need, it might last you a minute. Like, for me, this will last because I'm not putting this shit on my hair every day unless I really need to. And on top of that, um, I'm not glopping it the fuck on. So this is what it turns out to look like. Don't mind this piece right here because I haven't done that one yet. But anyway, it comes in four different colors. It comes in color number one, 1B, um, number two, and um, warm brown. Warm brown is like a reddish tone brown. So it wouldn't, have did, it wouldn't have worked for me. So I got this right here, which is the number two, the dark brown, because... Um, you know, my hair is like in between a dark brown. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, where did it? Listen, my whole thing is this. I should have read the fucking cap on the goddamn top because it was in clear. It says 
0.5 ounces. So, I mean, I didn't even think about that. I should have did that, but I'll know for next time. So that is basically it. So, you know, I'm just, listen, I know I'm trying to grow my edges back and I don't even put anything on my edges. This is for the hair right here. All the rest of the way that I slick it back, let me tell y'all, I don't even use gel, but for right here, and that's the soft gel. But for all of this where it's missing, you would only imagine. I use the Dr. Miracles Temple and stuff to slick that shit back. It may not hold like that, but you know what? I don't really even give a shit. That's why I have my wig just sitting down on top of it. Uh, and there's no combs in it or, me, or anything like this. Combs, but they're not even in my head. They're just, the wig is just sitting right there. Okay? I mean, so if it ain't blended in well, you see like a line of demarcation. I told y'all bitches. All right? So anyway, other than that, we're going to get into this real talk. If you guys have a real talk that you want to be done about yourselves, then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 oh, excuse me, at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk. And on that note, we're going to get into this. Um, oh, yes. And one more thing. If you guys want your names to be changed in a real talk, please go ahead and make sure to say... April bitch, I'll change the names for you. And if you don't do that, then um, I'm going to just assume that you didn't change the names or I'm just going to change them. So either way, you know, just, you know, try to do that unless you want everybody to know, you know, who you are. But I'm pretty sure there's more than one. Anyway, let's get into this. <laughs> All right, you guys, so this young lady, um, she's titled this Real Talk Take Two. It's another baby mama story. Okay. Hey, April, I emailed this once before, hoping for a response, but I forgot to title it Real Talk. My fault. Good thing, though, because this is updated compared to the last. Sorry, girl, it's a long one. All the names have already been changed. I really don't know where to start with this, so I guess the best thing is to start from the beginning. My name is Sun. And I just recently turned 20. My boyfriend, Richard, is now 27. We met at a concert and... Oh, she just said she changed the names. Right? Oh, then I ain't got to make up no names. Okay. My name is Sky, and I just recently turned 20. My boyfriend, Rich, is now 27. We met at a concert in my home city, a famous rap artist. He was, a, he was once a local rapper years ago, but is now internationally known was performing and he was a part of the uh, and Rich was a part of the entourage. Rich is only locally known with a few good con connections. My best friend, her cousin and I didn't get good seats, but your girl was broke in high school, so honestly, as long as I got to see the performance, I was cool. Fast forward through the concert. My best friend, her cousin and her cousin's friend all ended up at a local pizza shop. It was like the after party in a way. There were so many people in there that my friends and I couldn't even find a seat. We really didn't need one anyway. I don't think we brought money to eat after the concert. We found seating though, and oddly enough, our booth was behind Rich and his friends. Make a long story short, he took out a huge wad of cash. I know it was all for show, lol. Bought us all food, and after some smooth talking, he got me. First added my IG, and later we exchanged numbers. The next day, I was in class, and he offered to take me out for breakfast. I replied and told him I was in class. He thought I meant college. He had no idea I wasn't even 18. I was 17. I already knew he was well over the age of 21. Still, we stayed in contact, and he took me out that weekend where I found out that he is a producer, among other things. We got to know one another over multiple dinners and nights out. Not once did he try to make a move on me or have sex with me. He was and still is a true gentleman. Opens doors, brings my mother flowers, walks on the outermost side of the sidewalk. You know, things that guys have no idea about in 2018. At the end of every night out together, he walked me to my front door and never tried to get inside my bedroom, which I found kind of out strange. I assumed all these rap niggas and similar wanted the kitty cat. Rich always remains respectful. Even after I was of age, he never pushed sex on me. Instead, Rich showered me in gifts, and for a long time, I genuinely thought he wanted me to become his hoe. I was waiting for the day he would ask me to become a prostitute. Never did. Why would she think that? 
After months of casually dating, I graduated high school and his gift to me was a pair of expensive design expensive designer shoes with a name I couldn't even pronounce. We made it official the summer of 2016. And for a long time, I was literally the happiest girl in the world. So I guess what she means by we, he, we made it official, maybe she had sex with him, I don't know. He would buy me whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted it. My family and friends loved him. His family loved me in return. Um, he took me on trips in and out of the country, paid my college tuition, exposed me to people in the industry I worked in. He has helped me by investing in the business that I own now. I don't want to give too many details away because I have friends who watch your videos. I can now do for myself what he solely once did for me, and he's happy about it. He's very supportive and lets the world know how much he loves me and our soon-to-be-born child. I am almost two and a half months pregnant. The only downfall is that he has a crazy baby mama who will not leave us alone. Anytime he's out of town, she'll reach out to me, whether it be through their son's phone, social media, etc., and tell me that she is with him and she's going to fuck him, etc. Weird bitch shit. Just weird bitch shit. She'll send me their old pictures, sex tapes, which I am not bothered by. The past is the past and all that has nothing to do with me. But this bitch will send him current videos of her thirsty ass playing with herself while all he wants to do is talk about their son shaking my fucking head this woman has come to my store with friends and told me that she'll kill me keyed her bitch into my car and his and most importantly she will not allow their son to see his father as long as i'm in the picture a restraining order won't stop her because her friends are just as crazy and they'll gladly carry on for her because all of them believe i am too young for rich his, ba his, ba his baby mama is also 27. Age never mattered to me, and I have more maturity and class and respect in my pinky toe than she could ever have, period. Anyway, I feel like Rich is too relaxed with this woman for the sake of his son, which I understand, but she starts to affect, she is starting to affect my pregnancy and money. She and her friends have tried so many times to talk, to get my Instagram deleted and talk bad about me to my customers and or employees. She even told a customer I have the herpes and I've beaten her son, which I have never. And her son loves me as much as I love him. April, I don't know what to do. Ever since my boyfriend and I moved in together, my life has been hell. I don't want to stress out so bad that I lose my baby or even worse. Worse, she gets physical with me while pregnant because there have been plenty of opportunities for her to do so. Sometimes I regret getting pregnant. It would be so much easier to just dead the situation. But even still, I don't want to leave him and we raise his baby in a broken home. But for the duration of my pregnancy, I'll move back home with my mother. I love him so much, I cry because I am so torn. He is the second boyfriend I've had and the only man I've been intimate with in my life. Rich won't allow me to go back home to my family. He never hesitated to put his baby mom in her place. But the only but that only lasts for so long before she starts her shit up again. Each time gets worse than the last. It's almost like he's dusting it under the rug so we can all be a family. Him, his son, our child, and I. But it's not working. We can't speak sense to a jealous bit of crazy bitch. Their son's birthday party is coming up, and it's where my plan and it was where we plan on announcing my pregnancy. But I don't even want to attend. I don't want all that drama going on. I'm not sure how she rat. Update. She put update. Rich's Rich's son's birthday was this Saturday afternoon. I really do regret going because I feel that I have ruined this little boy's day with the help of his mother and her friends. Rich and I didn't even announce the pregnancy. I didn't want to take away from his son. But his baby mama was not happy that I was there. She didn't want me to take pictures with her son at all. Literally, anytime someone picked up a camera there, she was hauling the boy off and away from me. Anytime Rich and I were alone together, she tried to do the same and claim their son needed him. My boyfriend and I were matching colors unintentionally, and her friends made rude comments about my outfit. All in all, things got very rowdy, and I left because I'm not about to go to war with this lunatic and her lunatic friends at a kid's birthday party. Rich was very angry, and he already let this woman know that I would be there. 
I'm laying in bed next to Rich typing this. Him and I still don't speak as often. My choice unless it's to go to a doctor's appointment. He never wants me to go alone. What is that? He never wants me to go alone. This whole thing is putting a huge dent in our relationship. And his baby's mama's trying to embarrass me at their child's birthday party made it worse. I'm not trying to get the boy's mom. I'm not trying to be the little boy's mother. He has a mom. But trying to keep me, but her trying to keep me out completely, I don't understand. Rich has talked about marriage, but I don't know about all that now. I don't know if I can make this a lifelong baby mama drama story. I'm mad at myself sometimes because it seems like I am always running and she is winning. But at the end of the day, it's not my life. I'm too worried about it's my child. I was kind of unexpected. It was kind of unexpected that, but I dumped. It was kind of un. It was kind of unexpected, but am I dumb for getting pregnant? How should I approach this whole thing? I've tried talking to my boyfriend so many times, and he says it's uncontrolled, uncontrol, un, un, uncontrollable. But it's not. And what should I do about his baby mama? His family supports me, but they can do only so much without Rich getting upset at them being in his business. I know that a lot of this is hate. It's because of my age and because I am in the position she wants to be in with a genuinely good man. Rich left her because of her evil ways. She thought trapping him with a child would work, but that never works. Ain't that the truth? I love your channel and I trust your unbiased opinion. XO. I'll insert a picture of me. Don't show. Well, girl, you didn't insert a picture, but that's okay. So Sky is, I guess she's what, 21? She's 21, yeah. And Rich is 27, and Rich's baby mama is 27. And Rich's baby mama is a true, total bitch. And her friends is a bunch of fucking dickheads, too. So first of all, how do you handle somebody with whose baby mama? Like, so if you're in a relationship with somebody and they got this crazy deranged baby mama, what do you fucking do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have never had the problems of, of any baby mama you know what i'm saying i've never had any of those issues you know what i'm saying like my other kids yeah they got siblings to you know that's not on my side but i've never had any issues with their baby mothers like you know what i'm saying because i you know what it is with me i just stay to myself and i stay in my lane i don't but and then it is another thing with me it's like i'm not gonna tolerate your bullshit like you know okay so you know what what am i talking about i did have an issue with a baby mama so Tati's father, Robert Earl, he's a dickhead. He's 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 just a dickhead. He's somebody who is just a dickhead. And to me, he's like straight pussy. He is straight pussy. And and he has the worst breast worst breath in the world. Like seriously, he has the motherfucking worst breath in the world. Okay. He should carry Tic Tacs, peppermints, and banaca spray. And maybe even spray on deodorant and roll on deodorant in his back pocket back pocket because he has the worst breath in the fucking world okay and i don't know how you can have the worst breath in the motherfucking world and not even smell your own motherfucking breath but either way you know what i'm saying he um you know we were cool we would we, we when i say we were cool like you got respect for me and i got respect for you um but his baby mother she's just a ratchet her name is keisha she's when i say she's a ratchet she is a motherfucking ratchet okay and I think she thinks because she has light eyes that she's cute. But she is a ratchet, all right? The worst looking. You ever you ever seen that movie Bap with um Holly Berry and I don't remember the heavy set girl, but you know how they wore their hair and them stupid. She her wigs to this day look not only is she that, but she is Schenectady's fucking biggest motherfucking trollop okay she's just a ratchet and she's younger than me and she looks like she's probably like three times my age and she's just a ratchet like oh my god she's just a motherfucking ratchet like she is the reason why they made the word up ratchet thought and whatever hood rat like seriously and i'm not even saying this because of him because i could care less about him they're not even together but she's a ratchet okay and you know he would come and get my daughter whenever he felt like it. Or not even felt like it, but like, hey, I'm coming to get Tati, whatever. Okay, fine. He wouldn't even come in my house. He would just get her from the porch because my husband didn't play that shit and neither did I. Like, I don't want you around me. Just come get your daughter and go ahead. So one year, I'll never forget. Um, I don't 
remember where I was coming from, but I know I was getting out of my car and I was walking up to the door, okay? And this bitch just pulled up out of nowhere. This bitch pulled up out of no motherfucking where and was like, I can't remember what she said word for word, but basically she just was saying some shit like, more or less, it, it came down to like, I want her man. I had to tell her, are you out your fucking mind to be even coming over here to my house? I remember telling her that, and then I remember telling her, don't nobody want your fucking man, girl, please. You don't even want him, all right? You don't even fucking want him. You fuck everybody in the town. I said, but I got something for your ass. Stay right fucking there. The bitch took off because she knew I had something for her ass. Because if you want to pull up on me, bitch, we going to go at it. And, bitch, I got something for you in the house. Just hold the fuck on. But... You know, she would talk shit, but never to my face. You know what I'm saying? She would say shit to, like, Robert Earl. Or she would say shit to, like, people that she thought knew me. Like, oh, she's ugly and shit like that. Like, bitch, you know, like, oh, I'm fat. All kind of shit. So, you know, it wasn't even shit like that. Like, you know, she was cool in the beginning because she would come through and she would get Tati for him because he really didn't do much. But I don't know what made her start getting jealous of me. Because I could care less about your bad mouth, stinking ass breath, little dick husband. Like, don't nobody want him. He stutters because he makes up story times. He's a big ass liar. He's just, and he's a pussy, like straight up pussy. All right. And who wants to, it's one thing to have a man with a funky ass breath, but if you got a man who's pussy, then you girl, you all fucked up and got a little dick girl, you fucked up. So you got a little dick your breath smell like shit and you can't fight. Dang girl. You, you talk about, I want him, bitch. You don't even want him. Go ahead with that bullshit. Go ahead. So anyway, you know, with her, you know, there was an occasion where I basically had to put her in her place because her and I think Robert Earl wasn't together anymore. And Tati was at the bus going for camp. And Tati probably had to be like about 14, 15 at the time or 16. Probably like 16, 15, 16. I'll never forget it. Keisha ass was over there at the bus stop waiting to put her niece on the bus for, um, you know, the Boys and Girls Club summer camp. And I don't know what it started from, but I know my friend Christy called me and she was like, yeah, your friend Keisha, um, you know that girl Keisha, she didn't even say your friend. Keisha, you know the one who was married to your baby father? And I was like, yeah. She's like, I just had to go off on that bitch and let her have it. And I was like, what happened? She said, I seen her at the bus stop trying to go off on Tati. And I was like, what? Yeah, she was trying to run her mouth off to Tati because Tati will run her mouth back off at her. She doesn't like, they didn't like each other anymore. I don't know what the thing is, why she didn't like my daughter anymore, but it didn't even matter. She knew Tati since she was a little, like two years old, but she didn't like her anymore because she got older. I don't even know. But I called the camp and Tati told me, and then I got a hold of Keisha on the phone after my friend Chrissy told me. And Chrissy was like, you got a problem. You could either take it up with me or you could go to her house around the corner. So either my friend was going to handle you or I was going to handle you. Either way, I called her on the phone. She started stuttering. She was like, no, 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 I don't have a problem. So basically, I had to just put her in a place. But it wasn't like a big baby mama drama like that, that um, Sky is talking about, because I'm not even about to let that even get that far. Like, you got one fucking time to get smart with me, bitch, and I'm about to handle you. You know what I'm saying? And, like, it started off like that. Like, the, when he, you know, how it first started off with Keisha was he came to get Tati. She was probably, like, a few months old. He came to get her, and he brought her back home. When he brought her back home, they came in a cab. Why is you bringing this bitch to my fucking house to return my baby? Okay, first of all, I don't even know this bitch. I didn't even know about her. I knew about her, but I didn't know of her. And second of all, don't bring this fucking raggedy-ass bitch to my fucking house to know where I live at. And so when he came with... Tati and um she's a baby she gets out the cab like to make her presence known like bitch you crazy you got two big fucking blonde braids looking like a ratchet ass hoe and you standing outside of a cab trying to make it be known who you fucking with bitch I don't give a shit first of all so when I said to him I said are you in that cab he was like yeah I said that's your girl <clears throat> yeah that's Keisha <clears throat> I said don't you ever bring that fucking girl to my house again why don't bring that bitch to my house. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't like people knowing where I live at. Don't bring her to my fucking house no more. I don't give a fuck who she is to you. Don't bring that bitch to my house, okay? She didn't say anything. And the reason why I said it like that is because, for one, I already heard her talking about me from people already before I even got to see the bitch. You know what I'm saying? She's never even seen me. I'm not from Schenectady, New York. I don't know anybody up here like that. Why are you talking about me, bitch? You don't even know me. 
okay? Because you felt like, oh, he cheated on me with you. Girl, bye. Don't nobody give a fuck about his ass. His breath fucking stink, okay? And he got a little fucking pecker. Girl, bye. His dick is like the size of a chapstick tick. Like the size of a fucking chapstick. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, bye, okay? Second of all, he's a punk. Girl, don't nobody care about him. And but you, she's sitting there just was talking about me, talking about me, not just a couple of people, but quite a few people. The little bit of people that I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? It did get back to me. So she's talking shit about me, like really talking shit. And he even was telling me that shit. Like, for what? I have no clue. But now you're going to bring the bitch to my fucking house. Like, are you out your mind? And then when she get out the cab, she's standing there like, Bitch, first of all, you are like seven, eight years younger than me and him, and you think I give a fuck about you, you young, dumb bitch. Second of all, you standing outside of a cab. You're not even standing outside of no Escalade or no fucking expensive-ass Porsche or nothing like that. You standing outside of a fucking raggedy-ass fucking cab of Schenectady. Like, bitch, bye. They didn't even have Lyft or Uber back then. And that's why, you know, that's where it started from, like, don't bring that bitch around my motherfucking house. But, you know, she she came to me cordially, like, years later and tried to introduce herself and apologize. Okay, cool. But we're not about to be friends. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing I don't fuck around with is your baby mamas, keep them bitches away from me because I don't want to socialize with them. Yeah, yeah, we having birthday parties and shit, but I'm, I don't want to come to your kid's birthday party because I don't want to be part of that. And so I feel like this, like, in the beginning, sometimes females are so catty and it's a shame because these females that are catty like this it's like they don't, they have a point to prove but they don't really have a point to prove what is your point that you're trying to make like that was your baby father at a time okay bitch that's cool and when she calls you and sends you pictures talking about oh i'm fucking him you know what you should say laugh out loud bitch you wish you were okay Sometimes you can't ignore shit because if you constantly ignore it, then they're going to constantly do shit to you. You know what I'm saying? And like, really, what is her friends going to possibly do to you? Fight you when you're pregnant? Okay. If they even try to lay a hand on you, do you know these bitches could go to jail? You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I don't know about protection and orders of protections because I, I don't I don't really put those out on people. I don't do shit like that because I'm not a because it's a piece of paper. I know that shit is not gonna help me. What am I supposed to fucking paper cut you with this shit? Like I got this bitch, stay the fuck away from me. And on top of that, I feel like a punk bitch. But then again, having an order of protection is really like helpful and it works in your favor because if the bitch do still come around you and you got that order of protection, girl, you could whip that bitch ass and she's still going to go to fucking jail. Okay. So it's like you protecting yourself. I never really thought about it like that until I was explained by the actual police. Like, listen, I don't want to order protection against this bitch. You know who I'm talking about that bitch, Nicole, who busts my windows. They was like, you need, I was like, I don't need no order of protection against that bitch. Well, why? Because first of all, I'm not a punk and I don't need no order of protection against her. Okay. And when I see her, it's going to be on a popping. They was like, no, no, no. This is what you don't understand. They had to explain this to me. If you get an order of protection against her and then you see her out in public, it's going to be her word against yours. But mainly your word is going to stand because you got the order of protection. She don't. So if you beat her up, she's still going to go to jail. You're not going to get in trouble. I was like, oh, so y'all basically telling me, go get this order of protection against this bitch. And then when I see her beat her the fuck up and I'm not going to get in trouble, bet. Okay. Bet. However, I still didn't go get the order of protection because I still feel like a punk getting one. But I haven't seen that bitch since in the past, in, a, in over a year now, almost a year. April 30th would be a year. And she's probably like trying to avoid to see me. But either way, here nor there. The shit is like this with females. They are catty, and there's really nothing you can do about catty bitches like that. But I tell you what, though. The thing that you are allowing is for your relationship to go downhill because that's what she wants. She wants your relationship to end. She wants you to get scared and leave him alone. She wants you to be aggravated. I would not aggravate myself over that bitch for nothing in the world. What I would do is I would aggravate that bitch, okay? I'd be all up on Instagram showing my belly like, hey, this is me and my boo. We, we about to get married. He asked me to marry him. We having a baby. I would post as many pictures as I could on all my social media just so that bitch can get fucking mad and see that shit. That's what starts eating bitches alive. But when you don't do something and you don't say nothing, then, you know, eventually she might die down. But then again, she may feel like she got the best of you. She going to do what the fuck she want to do. But... I wouldn't never allow a bitch like her to get the best of me. Like, are you crazy? Never. I would post up pictures and all kind of shit just to make her fucking mad. Just to fucking get under her skin is what the fuck I would do. You know what I'm saying? Because what you gonna do, bitch? 
you gonna get mad and write something on the comment like, oh, fuck you, bitch. Oh, I hate you, Rich. Oh, you um, you just mad. And that's why you are, oh, yeah, he was mine, but you got my sloppy seconds. Bitch, uh, I got your sloppy seconds because of why? He left you because you an evil bitch. Um, so, no, and he's so much more happier. Or you, you know what I'm saying? That's how I would, that's how I would get the bitch. However, if the bitch keep harassing me, Put that bitch ass in jail. Of course, she gonna get mad. Say, oh, she done ran to the popo. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you gotta fight bitch with the law because here's the reason why. When you go at a bitch with a bat, they come back with something else. And sometimes it's like this. It's not even worth you lowering yourself and your class and your character for some low life bitch, okay? On some real shit. Females these days be so catty and just be so jealous and, and just funny and fuck fuckery acting over the dumbest shit ever like you would be amazed at the shit that i see like seriously and it's like you know what bitch you getting mad and you hating on me for what you don't even know me personally she doesn't know you personally she just knows that she doesn't like you because you fucking her baby father and y'all in a relationship and one because the main key is she's jealous okay She's jealous. And she got her little dumbass minions who's just as fucking retarded and stupid as her to follow in her footsteps, which is a shame because when you get to a certain age, I would think that you would mature. But you know what? There's some of y'all females out there, and I'm not trying to dish y'all, but whoever watching and know that you might have a friend like this or know that that's you, some of these females, they be like my age and act like they like 16 years old. Like they go out in public, be ready to fight bitches. Like, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? Like, okay. Okay, first of all, I understand you trying to stand up for yourself or whatever. That's cool and all. But you know what? I don't have time for that shit. You know, I, I'm all for, like, putting my foot down because I'm not about to let nobody ever disrespect me. However, I'm not going to go out in the street and make a scene and get rowdy and be just like, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? Let me take my earrings off and my wig off because you know I'm going to take my wig the fuck off. I'm not going to do shit like that. That's not what I do. You know what I'm saying? Some people may find like, oh, that's a punk bitch if you don't say nothing. Now, let me tell you something, bitch. I don't have time for your games. That's not. That's one thing I've learned as I've got older, okay? When you get a certain age, you need to stop the dumb shit and st just stop, okay? You know what I'm saying? Just stop, okay? I have learned that just because of my age and wisdom. Like, you know what? I am too old and too mature to be acting like y'all heathens. Y'all motherfucking heathens. And that's what she act like. She's 27 years old. This bitch damn near 30 and she acting like that. And they have a son together, which is a shame because her son see that shit. And not only that, but her family members see that and her little stupid ass friends see that. But you know what? Some females do act rowdy. Have you ever noticed a female in public and they be all on the phone talking real loud, okay? Talking about about their business real loud on the phone that's because they want to be seen you know what i'm saying they want to put on a scene i don't really know why but that's what like a lot of females do on top of that when they doing dumb shit like this they fighting over a man that don't even want them that makes them even more lamer you know what i'm saying me personally, if she was to call me or send me pictures, old pictures, you know, she's sending you old pictures, I would respond to her, be like, you don't got nothing new to send, bitch. Or you know what? I wouldn't even reply to her with that. I would reply to her with a belly shot, a shot of me and Rich together recent recently you know what i'm saying shit like that's what i would do because she's trying to make you mad but she's trying to make you mad with some old shit i would make her fucking pissed off and really jealous with some new shit and then sometimes i would just ignore the bitch because you know what as long as you continue to give her attention that bitch is gonna just feed off of that some bitches feed off of your anger so what i'm saying to you is don't allow her foolishness get your relationship fucked up, okay? If this man love you and he giving you everything in the world and he treating you with so much respect and he's doing everything for you, bitch, don't let that fucking clumsy ass clown bitch fuck you over like that. Don't let her get under your skin because you just gonna do exactly what she wanna do. She got her little fucking fucked up minions. You know what? Some You ever heard that saying, he all bark and no bite? That's what some bitches be. I noticed that with females. Uh, those females that talk all that shit, run their mouth off, they, you know, listen, let me tell y'all, when you ever, if you ever run into a female who run her fucking mouth all the time, you look at who she's running her mouth to. She always running her mouth to a female who she feel like is weak or who don't say nothing. And trust me when I say this, because I have gone through this in my lifetime. Okay. When I was in high school and shit. And sometimes even as a grown woman, 
You know what I'm saying? I have I have come across many people who have tried to be smart to me and get smart with me or even try to pick at me because for one, they'll think I'm pussy because I don't really say much. I'm just quiet. I'm a quiet person. I don't really get into a lot of shit. Or two, I'd be light skinned or whatever. It's shit like that. And it's like, you know what? Females always run their mouth to people that are punks, but then they also know who to pick their fights with which is lame as well. And you ever notice they run their mouth, but those be the ones that run their mouth constantly, you know, that be loud and obnoxious in the street. And it's like, okay, then you got to get your friends. That's that's That shows me right there that you're a punk bitch. If you got to get your friends to be your minion army, then bitch, you really punk. And for what? Y'all a bunch of dumb dickhead bitches because y'all running behind this fucking dickhead bitch over some nigga that don't even want you or your friends around. Like, bitch, go sit the fuck down and have a seat and watch how a real relationship is conducted, okay? Like, on some real shit. And that's what the fuck I would tell her. Have a seat, Lulu, because now you're about to see how a real relationship is conducted. This is the reason why he did not want you in the first fucking place. Because you're an evil immature ass woman, okay? And then you got your minions sitting around. But let me tell you, that bitch ain't gonna put no hands on you. She just all bark and no bite. Seriously, and her friends are too. Do you really think these grown ass women who are 27 and 28 years old are gonna jump you? No, that's not what the fuck they gonna do because they already know common sense, bitch, you gonna go to jail, okay? And common sense to rich. It, rich baby mama, if she watching this and she knows she put her hands on you, do you know that you could just put her in jail? Like, she's all bark and no bite on some real shit. I wouldn't even pay that bitch no mind, for real. But I, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't allow that bitch to fucking deter my relationship with my man. You crazy. And I damn sure wouldn't move back home with my mama because this bitch never do that. But what I would do is, since she be on your social media, bitch, I would be posting up all kind of bit pictures of me and Rich and our lavish life and our happy home and my pregnant belly. I would be doing all that and how happy I am and how happy Rich is. Trust me, that bitch going to unfollow and she going to block because she ain't going to want to see that no more. After a while, that shit going to eat her insides up. For real. Don't move back home with your mama because of this bitch. Don't, don't allow her to run you the fuck off. For real. If you think Sky that it's got something to do with your age, let me tell you something. Just because she 27 and you 21 don't got shit to do with anything. That bitch act like she 21 and you 27. She's immature. And what I would not allow is her to run me the fuck off and away from my fucking chance of happiness and away from my home and my marriage and my baby father. Girl, tell that girl bye, please. You you know what, girl? Bye. And the next time she sends you a, a text message talking about I'm fucking him, be like, girl, bye. You know what? You didn't waste so much of your time worried about what I'm doing with Rich. Now worry about what you need to be doing with yourself to get ahead. Point blank, period, and leave it at that. That's what the fuck I would do and say to her. Because you know why? Sometimes it's like this. When a bitch come at you because she mad and she hating, if you spew back shit to her that's mad and hateful, that's just going to keep adding her to come back. And if you come back at her, and she's coming up, that's just egging her on. But what you do is you just tell her, just like a lady, sweetheart, you have wasted so much of your time and mine somewhat with your, your jealous remarks and worried about what I'm doing in my life and what me and Rich is doing in our lives. When you need to be worried about what you're going to do to get your shit together, okay? Girl, stop wasting your time on us and go find yourself some happiness. If a bitch told me some shit like that, I would be like, I would be like this. Oh. Did this bitch really just fucking... I would feel like this big because, first of all, you didn't even come out your face and curse me out and call me out my name. You just told me that I'm wasting my time and I need to go find something to do with myself and better myself. You just told me that I ain't shit in a nice way. Like, who the fuck does that? That's what the fuck I would do. Okay? Don't let that bitch get you out of character on some real shit. Do not let that raggedy ass fucking bitch, ratchet ass, raggedy ass bitch get you out of character. Y'all, some of these females, for real... They be so fucking ratchet and so unworthy of even a breath of you even to say one word to them. It's like ridiculous. Like, seriously? I have seen some really, really ratchets in my lifetime. And um, I am just like amazed at them. Like, 
Y'all bitches, some of y'all bitches kill me with the way y'all be acting like, for real, over a nigga that don't even want y'all and who's with somebody else. Like, bitch, pull it together. Get it the fuck together, bitch. Like, for real, what the fuck is wrong with y'all bitches sometimes? Like, if a nigga don't want you, he don't motherfucking want you. And I, maybe I got too much pride, but I'm not about to make myself look stupid over no nigga and his bitch that don't even want me. Like, she look real stupid chasing after this girl who got her man. Like, that just shows that you're jealous. Like, serious. Now, y'all see how it dried up? It's, like, dry. See how it got? It, see what I'm talking about? So now we're going to move on to the next. Give Sky, what would y'all do in the situation if your baby father was with some other baby mama or your baby father had another girl? Or what would you do if your boyfriend's baby mama kept coming at you better yet? What would the fuck would you do? I don't know. I might get real tight and be knocking on that bitch door after a while. Like, bitch, what? Fuck you keep writing on my Instagram for a bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? That would be me after a while. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go in the, in the street and be rowdy and fight you in the street because I don't do that. Like, I'm not about to be in the street. Some, all I know is somebody could be, oh, look, that's my fitness, my lovers. Oh, shit, putting it all. No, I ain't going to do that. But what I will do is after a while, knock on your motherfucking door. Like, what the fuck is the problem, bitch? The fuck is wrong with you? That's what I would do. But I'm not saying for you to do that. But after a while, I would be fed the fuck up. Okay, so next story. Hey, Diva, you can call me Erica. I want to say how pretty you are and how much I love watching your videos and tell a bitch how it really is. And we all can appreciate that. But thank you, girl. Thank you. Here's the tea. I just found out I was pregnant. And girl, I'm... Why is everybody pregnant? And girl, I am flying over the moon, back over the moon, getting booked because I'm going too fast. And then over Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Shemina... Um, Sh Shaminas, I don't know what that is. Shaminas, LOL. For real, so excited. Congrats on the good news about your new addition, by the way. In case y'all don't know, because like I said, why is everybody getting pregnant? I'm having a third grandchild, okay? So my son, my eldest son, is having him and his girlfriend are having another baby, okay? April would be such a pretty name for the new baby. I guess she's talking about for my grandbaby, but, but that ain't gonna happen. Anyway. I've been with my boyfriend for about three years now. I'm 25 and he's 27. We're both so excited. But girl, here's the dilemma. There's always a dilemma. I'm a freelance writer and my boyfriend is a window cleaner. I make around $50 per 5,000 words. So it's really not that much once you take away the taxes. I'm a bit of a workaholic and sometimes only get around four hours of sleep at night. Girl, if you're pregnant, you need to get more than that. I have to put in so much work to get the money I need. I totally understand how you feel. I sometimes work 100 hours a week, not because I love it, but because I have to. We're currently saving for the baby, and it's putting such a strain on our love life. We feel like we can't do anything nice because we're hustling. My boyfriend's mom said we could move in with her till the baby's born because it would work out so much cheaper. But girl, she is a pain. I like my space. My doctor told me I should slow down on working because it would affect my health. But no one seems to understand that if I don't work, I'll be out on the streets. LOL. Girl, I understand. What you said in your last video really stuck with me. You hustle real hard to provide for your family, and I really respect that. I spend money wisely, and I love the Dollar Tree and things of that nature. Plus, your girl wants to look fly as the sky, and she wants and she can't with pennies. Can she? If I'm not pinching, cl <clears throat> pitching clients, writing, responding to emails, I'm doing homework and stressing and appointments. And oh, I feel like I could explode sometimes. I know this isn't a really sad real talk, but I just feel like I have the weight of my world on my shoulders. I should feel blessed, but girl, this is hard work. I haven't had a day off in so long. Should I find another job that's more stable? Should I move in with my boyfriend's mom? Help a sister out, muffins. Love ya, sleep deprived girl, Erica. So you know what's so crazy? She is feeling just like me. And I know how she feels. Like I said, I get like four hours of sleep a day, four, four and a half hours because I work. And I, I've never counted up how many hours that I work. But it probably is like 100 hours a week, you know what I'm saying? Because I work seven days a week. Either I'm editing a video every day, I'm making a wig, or I'm recording a video it's always something. And I do this because if I don't, what am I supposed to do? 
I'm going to be on the streets. So I work because I have no choice but to work. You know what I'm saying? And when I do go on vacation, I got my laptop with me. So I could totally understand how she feel. And not only that, but she is correct. Her doctor said that it can affect your health. And it probably really can. I like, you know what's so crazy? Like, I work for um different Chinese people, okay? I work for two other hair sites, you know what I'm saying? Um, and as their marketing manager. So I not only do I do my own shit, but I do it for, you know, like these two other wig websites. And I work for them. And they're always like, they, they WhatsApp me telling me, what are you doing up so late? You know, they'll WhatsApp me a message, but they're not expecting me to answer it at that time. They're expecting me to answer it like, you know, the next morning. And I'll answer them right back. It'll be like one, two o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm just up working. You are still working, sister? Because they, you know, they call me sis. Why you must get rest? You must get rest. It's not healthy for you not get rest. Asian people feel that it's very, very important to get a certain amount of sleep every day because if you don't, it will affect your health. And I probably totally believe them in this because if you don't, it fucks with you. It really will fuck with you in the end. So, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest moving in with his mom because even if you move in with his mom, girl, you still going to work just as hard. You know what I'm saying? You still going to work just as hard. You're going to be over there and you're going to still feel like, you know what? If I'm just sitting here, I might as well just be doing that. I might as well just be writing or responding to something. And that's what I do. I feel the same way. If I'm just sitting here watching TV, I might as well make a wig because I might as well be making some money. That's how I feel. So you're still going to be able to do, you're still going to be working just as hard. Now, if you feel like you need to get another job, then maybe you do. What I would say is this. If you like freelance working, then that's great. That's what your passion is, then that's great. You're going to school. I'm going to say this. I wouldn't say get a job that's outside of the home because, for one, you're pregnant. For two, that's traveling. For three, it may interfere with your schooling. However, what I would say is stop worrying so much. And I know that's something hard to tell somebody, especially coming from someone like me who's always paranoid and who always feels like, you know, they need to be at work and they have to be at work because if they don't, you know, I'm like a very paranoid person. I always feel like if I don't work and if I'm not working, then I'm missing out on money and I feel very paranoid. So I understand how you totally can feel. And there are days where I want to take a nap and I fall asleep at the computer because I'm working and I'm working and I'm working. And this is all I do. And it's unfortunate, you know what I'm saying, that you cannot enjoy time. But you know what? You have to realize that it's not just you, honey. It's your baby. And you also have your boyfriend who is with you. If he's working, then you're working. And stop feeling like you're going to be paranoid. If he's a window washer, maybe you should tell him to get another side job just to make ends meet because you're the one that's having the baby. And, you know, you don't want to stress yourself out. Now, um, I don't know. Do you live with his, his him? Um... I'm sorry, guys. I got, like, something in my eye. Um, do you and him live together? Um, I feel like, you know, why would you want to move in with his mom just until the baby's born? Moving is hell, okay? And moving costs money. Why spend money that you don't have to? Just try to find maybe like something that may be able to suffice all of the hours you're putting in. You know, maybe you may want to find like a home job. Like I worked for Arise.com. It's a, cause I know I forget to put this in, but it's work from home job. And I did do a video on it recently. And I also explained it in another recent real talk that was a couple weeks ago, but it's called Arise.com. Okay. And Oh, that black gel sure does get in your fingernails. Um, it's called Arise.com. It's A R I S E dot com. Arise. And um what it is is you can work from home. Now, I've worked for Amazon making twelve dollars an hour and you pick your own hours. I was getting like good checks. I mean to me they were decent, you know. $1,500 every two weeks, you know, I make my own hours. So, and they train you and it's very easy. You don't go anywhere to get trained. You, you, you train at home. You know what I mean? So they have, they had Walgreens at a time. They had Sprint. They have at and They have very, um, they're very well known and they have real professional companies. So I would look into something like that, like from a work home job. 
That way you don't have to leave the home. And even if you still want to do the freelance writing, then you're able to do that and you're able to make ends meet. But I definitely would want to expect you to get more than four hours of sleep. It definitely because you're pregnant. And I know you guys are like, girl, you the pot calling the kettle black. You don't get four, you don't even get more than four hours of sleep. Yeah, I don't. You're right. I don't. However, I'm not pregnant either. Okay. I may need sleep. I don't, you know, I'm not that I'm tired, but I know that it's not good for me to not get sleep like I'm supposed to. So it's not that I'm tired. It's just that, you know, I just, I just need to work and I just feel lazy if I don't. But I also feel like this. You have somebody that is with you in a relationship. Granted, y'all may live together or he may live down the street from you at his mom's house. Either way, y'all are in the same state and y'all, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like this, like you guys should work together and you shouldn't have to be working harder than him. A window cleaner, I'm not knocking his job because at least he has a job. Some people don't even have that. And I don't know if it pays good or not. I, I'm not there. I don't see their paychecks. But I will say this, like maybe he should find like a side hustle, you know what I'm saying, to help suffice with the bills and getting ready for baby. And on top of that, like, I know babies are expensive. They they really, really are. They are super duper expensive. And everybody wants the new shit. Everybody wants, like, their baby to have the best shit in the world. They want, oh, I want my baby to have this, and I want my baby to have that. And, yeah, I understand that, but sometimes we can't always have what we want. And sometimes we may not be able to have what we want brand spanking new. So what I would do is I would look into things like this. Look on OfferUp. Look on Craigslist, if anybody even uses Craigslist anymore. Look in your... It's about to be summer. Look at your local yard sales to find little things for the baby. Not not bottles or anything, but like, you know, you might be able to find like a nice swing set, nice things. As long as, you know, go into the good neighborhoods and you can find some really good shit. But, you know, try to buy some things secondhand. That will save you on money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That will save things. Also, if you're two months pregnant now, I would I would buy like diapers, maybe a bag of diapers every week. That's what me and Tati did. We bought a bag of diapers every week, baby wipes and things like that. That way we prepared way ahead. So that way things don't get so expensive when the baby is here. That's how I handled the situation. But I would definitely suggest talking to my boyfriend and telling him like what you're going through. You know, you're sleep deprived. It's, it's you know, you guys don't even have like a sex life like that or anything like that because you're working constant hours and it's not healthy for you. You need to sit down with you and your boyfriend and you need to put in plan a budget. So that way you guys are not working so much and you're not overdoing it and you're not killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? You guys won't go homeless if you work together and you budget together. But definitely don't overwork yourself because you're having a baby and you need the most rest than anybody that I know. Okay? But moving in with his mother, I wouldn't even dream about that because for one... Like you said, she's a pain and she probably don't mean any harm because if she did, she, she did, she would invite you into her home. So I'm probably sure she thinks very highly of you because she invited you into her home. However, I wouldn't put myself in that predicament because once you move into somebody's home, they got their own set of rules. They, they set in their own ways, girl. And I would never put myself in that predicament to be in nobody else's fucking house. No way, no how. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. Mm-mm. And if she's a pain to you now, could you only imagine how she'll be when you're even further along in your pregnancy? So what I would suggest is to make yourself a nice little budget and work together. You and your boyfriend, make a list of what the things that you need and what the things that you can buy secondhand if you're not going to have a baby shower. And also the bills that you have and how much your money is. So that way you guys are not in a hole and buy little things at a time for the baby. You know, don't depend on other people to buy you stuff. And you know what I'm saying? Because some people depend on baby showers and shit. And they, okay, you can have a nice baby shower. That don't mean you're going to get the shit you want or you can even get the shit that you need. You know what I'm saying? So those are the th those are the things that I would do, you know what I'm saying? And and I would just, you know, basically work it out like that. I would not quit my job to find another job. And, and finding work is not that easy for one. But I would definitely look into arise.com to get a work from home job. It's super easy and you'll be able to be at home and you know what I'm saying? You probably could work the both of the jobs at the same time, you know what I'm saying, since you're a freelance writer. But um I would look into doing something like that versus, you know, saying, you know, quitting my job and just doing something that I probably really didn't want. You know what I mean? That's that's just my take on it. So, you know, 
you guys give um her your opinion give erica your opinion on what you guys would do about it. so anyway you guys so that was going to be real talk for today just two videos because i do have a really um i do have like a headache i have like a lot of things to do it's getting late i've had a very long day you know what i'm saying and i just you know i just want to be able to just relax for the day so i hope you guys understand about the real talk only being like two episodes you know regardless of what never let anybody bully you regardless man or female never let anybody bully you that's gonna be the number one key never let anyone fucking bully you out of a relationship out of a friendship out of anything you know what i'm saying and this goes not just for the first story you know what i'm saying but for everyone in general don't let anybody bully you because in reality sky that is you being bullied by your baby's father's baby mama your boyfriend's baby mama you're being bullied by her and bullies do not are not tolerated okay for one, we're not going to tolerate anyone being a bully. Second of all, you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean, don't allow people just to walk all over you and take you for granted or advantage, you know. You know, sometimes it's okay for us to stand on our own two feet and speak our mind without getting carried away or coming out of character, you know what I'm saying? That is what life is about. One thing I will tell you guys this. Don't let anybody walk all over you. Don't feel like you're second fiddle to anybody. You know what I'm saying? If you feel strongly about something, then you go for it. If you want to be with Rich or you want to be with your boyfriend because this is who you makes you happy and you feel strongly about it, bitch, feel strongly about that shit. You know what I'm saying? You are pregnant. You are you are to be happy and to be stress-free. And this goes for both you and Erica. You guys are pregnant. Don't let anything, you know, stress you out during your pregnancy. Not job, not work, not money, not a man, not a baby mama. You know what I'm saying? You pregnant, it's supposed to be the happiest time of your life. So enjoy it. And on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in a soon to come video. And yeah, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all soon. What? Yeah. 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 Yeah.